Goedemorgen allemaal. And yes, Amsterdam West rules. Is there anyone here from Amsterdam East? There's West, there's East. You're in the back of the bus. Um, everybody already a little bit awake? That's a no. Um, so that's okay. Um, you have some uh, two minutes of uh, snooze time now. Welcome to Amsterdam, everyone, and welcome to I Amsterdam. Also, welcome to Pakhuis de Zwijger, the location where we are now. I've never been in a location with this many screens. Um, so this morning, there were actually all nine of them were lit up and playing this video. All nine of them, it was kind of a, a little bit much. But um, happy to have you here, Pakhuis de Zwijger. For those of you that don't know it, um, was originally built to be. Uh, a refrigeration facility for perishable goods. So imagine the tomatoes and uh, leeks and other things being here before we were here, actually. Um, and also, welcome to Soma Tea, but the hashtag, I thought I'd put it out there a, a little bit for you, but it's been mentioned before. Um, today, I like to talk about Lego, about the Sistine Chapel, and about a moon landing and how it all relates to uh, I Amsterdam, because I think it does. Mostly what it says to me is that uh, how powerful certain images can be and how well uh, they can work for us in the travel sphere. As you saw earlier, the name of the, my presentation is I Amsterdam, a brand people love to share, but when I actually was making this presentation, in the end I felt two more applied. One of them is how to build a Colosseum for under 50K, uh, and at the end of the presentation, you'll see why I say that. And the other thing is, um, I feel I Amsterdam, if this were to be a campaign, could uh, actually be perceived as the world's best marketing campaign ever. And obviously, there are a lot of people in this room who will debate me on that. But I'm hoping over the course of this presentation that you'll get the sense of why I actually say that. And it's interesting that I uh, am here uh, as an advocate for the I Amsterdam brand because I remember very vividly in 2004 when it was introduced that I hated, I hated the I Amsterdam brand. At that time, I was working in New York um, at the Netherlands Board of Tourism as marketing and PR director and uh, 
responsible for the North American market. And there were these people from Amsterdam, and they thought of a new brand, a big red ribbon um, across everything and every creative that we designed. And as we uh, are from the Netherlands border of tourism, our main color is orange. And I was going to say, it, unless you're colorblind, you can see that this is not a very good combination to have splattered all over your advertising and branding. So I think we did everything that we could at Netherlands Board of Tourism those first few years to avoid having to put that I Amsterdam brand on anything. And I think we also didn't necessarily believe in it that much. Um, so it's only fitting that after 10 years I'm here telling uh, a gleaming story about uh, the I Amsterdam brand. It's, I think it's a punishment for being a non-believer. Um, I am here today to talk about I Amsterdam and the I Amsterdam brand, but I think what ultimately this, this presentation is about is about powerful stories. And I think in the past few years we've been talking a lot about storytelling, um, and I think it's still something that's very important in our line of business. Um, and you'll see throughout the presentation how I Amsterdam helps a lot of people to create a very powerful story to share with their friends and everyone else. And I'm hoping to see a lot of that in other presentations as well. Um, and when I talk about I Amsterdam, I will mainly focus on the I Amsterdam letters because those are most well known to a lot of people. Um, there's much to say about how we apply it, how we use it, when we use it, why we use it. But I think it's most interesting to uh, focus as much as possible, possible about, the, uh, about the letters. I also, I think that I've seen some people from Breda University here. I will also be quoting from um, someone who wrote a thesis about the I Amsterdam letters, and they call it typographic place branding science. His name is David Hornstein, and I'll be using some of his, uh, his work um, and his facts in this presentation as well. Um, I Amsterdam brand was introduced in 2004 to put an end to the incoherent and poorly managed previous brands that were used in the city. I don't even remember what we used before 2004 in, in Amsterdam, probably something with Amsterdam. Um, so it was developed as an umbrella brand that would integrate and represent the benefits and the core values of the city. And through the three core values, creativity, innovation, and spirit of commerce, it was, um, as a brand, it was designed to attract uh, and incorporate locals, um, visitors, and businesses alike. So it's one brand for everything that we do in the city. Um, and as you probably have guessed, I'm not a big branding believer, uh, although this is a story that if you stick to it uh, and the story is good enough, you will actually get there in the long run. Uh, these are three of the mottos that are from the I Amsterdam Manifest. And what I think uh, is the interesting about these mottos is that you can clearly see that the intention of the brand um, was to connect to people and to allow other people to interact with it um, and to use it to tell their own story. It's a very inclusive brand. It's always meant to be like that. Um, and that seems to work out really well um, for the brand now. So again, um, mainly going to focus on these on the letters. Uh, the one on the left is the one that's positioned at Museum Square. It was introduced in 2005. This is actually an image um, from 2006. It's in a slightly different position, but it's always been at Museum Square. It's now a little bit closer to the Rijksmuseum. The second set, which is the one in the middle, um, which isn't there anymore, is the traveling set. It was introduced in 2009. Um, and it travels around the city and uh, is positioned at important events throughout the year. It could be the uh, Amsterdam dance event, uh, it could be any type of um, big event that we think is important that deserves the letters to be there and to, deserves to be recognized. The third one you see uh, on your right is the second permanent set that was established in 2012 at the airport. The scenery isn't as charming as uh, the first two, but it was set there um, because when it was traveling there, um, I think also in 2011, it had been positioned there temporarily. People liked it so much that we decided to put a second permanent set there. Um, The reason why I think the I Amsterdam letters are loved so much is um, because it actually 
the letters actually helped the brand to go from concept to idea to brand, something intangible, uh, and actually brought it to a place where people could touch it, people could see it, people could interact with it. Uh, the I Amsterdam letters actually helped, in that sense, the brand to, to come alive for a lot of people. Um, and it was actually also meant uh, for people to adopt the brand a little bit better, because if you just plaster it on a poster, you put in an ad, it doesn't necessarily mean anything to anyone. So that's, what, that's why I was decided to put it on Museum Square in 2005 to really assist people to adopt it. Um, interestingly enough, and sometimes we get this question is, uh, so did you actually foresee that you know, people would be uh, uh, interacting with this brand and with these letters so much? No, of course not, we're, we're a DMO. Um, so we were actually very happy that the uh, setup of the brand setup of the letters actually coincided with you know, a boost in technology, a boost in social media, and it turned out to be a very, very, very strong uh, focus point for people to go and tell a very strong travel narrative. Um, ultimately, as I said before, um, I Amsterdam is about you. Um, and I'm going to uh, read this out loud because I have a hard time um, remembering this. It's ultimately um, the people of Amsterdam are the strongest asset of the city. And that is our core belief next to the three core values that we have. It's the people that live here, the people that visit here, the people that study here, the people that set up their business. And that's why within the brand we say, I choose Amsterdam for business, I choose Amsterdam uh, for inspiration, I choose it for my home, I Amsterdam. Um, and if you want to, you can say, I am Amsterdam. That's perfectly fine as well. Uh, and in expressing I Amsterdam, uh, we demonstrate a clear choice for the city. It shows our pride and it shows our dedication um, to the city. Now, now, who bought into this? A few. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, hopefully, a few more will feel it a little bit more. If someone noticed the very, very old school flip phone in there, um, so as you can see, it's it's an uh, it's a clip that we've used for quite some time now, but I think it's still very powerful, um, and it still at least uh, gives everyone uh, at our office the goosebump. So um, that's why I uh, I really like to show it. Um, this too is a very powerful travel image. It's just you know not in uh, uh, within reach just yet. Um, however, the reason why I chose this image is because it tells a very powerful story, but it also immediately tells you where this is. This could be on no other place than on the moon. So it really already uh, tells you a few things of where this is taking place and what someone's doing. It really tells a full story. Um, for us, the I Amsterdam letters do that as, as well. Um, I Amsterdam uh, and the brand helps us to tell a story. It's not a campaign, uh, despite my initial um, uh, idea for the, for the presentation, of the, for the title of the presentation. It's not a campaign. It's something that's always there. It's consistent, and it allows everybody else to make their own story. We don't use it as a hashtag. We don't put hashtag in front of the I Amsterdam letters or uh, in our brand. We allow people to do with it what they want. 
Um, interestingly enough, uh, and we don't necessarily always look at this uh, in our organization as well, it tells a very, very simple story, those letters. Because here you have, I'm not going to say random, but a selection of European cityscapes. Um, this could be old buildings, it could be town squares, but these are all in Europe. And granted, probably most of the people in this room would be able to say where it is. Um, However, the vast majority of people have no idea where this is. They, they feel a lot of it is interchangeable. It could be Germany, it could be Holland, it could be the Czech Republic, it could even be in Spain. Now, there's a very easy thing that you can do uh, in this sense, and this is how the letters work on a very basic level, is that when you have your city name plastered all over a lot of those pictures, and granted, it's not in all of those pictures, but we've counted on a good summer day near the I am some letters, about 8,000 people take a picture of the I am some letters. 50% um, of it has indicated they will share it on social media uh, and they will share it to an average of 300 friends. And that means on a good summer day, if people do actually post it, the Amsterdam and the I Amsterdam brand is plastered to 1.2 million people on a daily basis, which I think for something that's just um, under 50K to build is not a bad way to market your own city. Um, this is probably not entirely visible or understandable, but uh, on the left two uh, screens there is uh, using a uh, usage of Twitter on the right screen, there is um, where pictures are taken. So what you see already here is that the I Amsterdam letters are the number one photographed item um, in the city by far. Even if you zoom out, it will still remain uh, the number one spot to be fo to be photographed. Um, this doesn't probably make a sense to anyone who doesn't live in Amsterdam, but this is the center of Amsterdam, and on the left you see that. Uh, people in Holland are quite uh, keen on using Twitter. But the difference is, is that the blue dots are locals and the red dots are tourists. And as you can see, and I'm sure this has a... This is uh, Museum Square. This is where the letters are. So you see that there are a lot of red dots there and people using and interacting with those letters. There's some other spots here. Here is pe Dutch people complaining about the train. My train is late. <laughs> <laughs> And here is Dutch people complaining about everything. Oh, I hate my life. <laughs> and this is uh, people on the tram. Oh, my tram is late, you know. Uh, so, uh, and and uh, the tourists are at Dam Square, Rembrandt Square, and most of them are at Museum Square. Um, tells an interesting story as well. But the main thing is that um, uh, it's become such a big draw um, in our destination, and it really helps to have a permanent set of those letters to have that on Museum Square. Um, now, I, re I love this picture, I just found it online, um, and uh, nobody even knew it within, within our office, but uh, it, tells, it tells an entire story. I don't know the story, but I can imagine that um, these are um, Film Academy students from Texas. I have no idea, let's call them from Texas. They came to Amsterdam because they, uh, they wanted to know where in Amsterdam Quentin Tarantino wrote his script for Reservoir Dogs. Uh, I have no idea how they came to these, but um, they either bought them or, or made them themselves. But it's interesting that this tells a full story, this, this tells to everyone we were in Amsterdam and this is what we were doing. Um, and that's why I, I truly enjoy uh, these pictures. And it also shows that um, the I Amsterdam brand allows a lot of people to tell their story. Um, they tell it in very various ways, in different ways. Um, there's people uh, who there's older people, there's obviously a, lo a lot of young people who climb on them, but it allows everyone to create their own story. They do something creative with it. They, the brand allows people to, to interact and do their own thing. And there are a lot of um, examples, and I haven't put them in here, but this is somewhere in Asia. Um, there are bars, there are clubs, there are restaurants, obscure places around the world. Uh, where they've adopted the I Amsterdam brand and put it in their shop or something else, or, or they've changed it um, and used the I am something, but it's always with um, red and white. So it's very nice to see for us that people are embracing the whole concept. Um, 
of the letters. And it's not, not just people who travel or people who visit here that uh, use the letters and the brand to make a strong travel or a, a strong uh, story, but it's also that on occasions we use it together with a lot of other organizations to tell everyone's story. It's not just our story, but we can use the brand and we can use the letters to help assist other people uh, to tell a great story. So here is, um, well, who doesn't know Richard Branson? Um, he's painting the letters green for um, a green initiative, an award where, uh, which he chairs. Um, this is also a, a fun one from a while back. Um, the AM letters were stolen and were replaced by an origami figurine. Uh, and the AM letters were uh, offered uh, up for sale on uh, Marktplatz, which is a, a Dutch eBay channel. It turned out that Sony was behind it and this was their way of introducing their new game. Um, I am to Dam, um, a, a Dam Waste Food Festival, trying to get attention for um, us as a species, wasting a lot of uh, food. My personal favorite, this one, the National Stuttering uh, Foundation worked together with, uh, with us in that, I am Saddam. Uh, so it's a great way uh, for us to help other people to tell their story. And the other one is um, I am Saddam uh, TV 2013. We had the European Music Awards by MTV. Um, here are some other examples of typographic place branding signs. Um, and I'm not going to say anything about them, and I'm not going to say what I think about them. Um, I think they're, they're pretty in their own right. I think what worked well for the I Amsterdam letters is that it actually didn't come from wanting to create typographic place branding signs. It came from the desire to uh, have a brand and have it be adopted by the people that live in the city and the people that visit the city. It's actually the interesting thing is that the I Am Saddam letters were not actually designed by us, but it was an artist in 2004 who was inspired by the brand who made the first letters in 2004. And in 2005, we adopted it and created the first set. So it's never been anything that really came from us as something planned and organized. It's something that came from the community. Um, so to me, it's very important um, to have that, to have that authenticity, uh, and that's why I think it really works. Now, if you were to do anything similar like this, there are a few interesting lessons. One, let it be authentic, but every place is authentic, so you shouldn't have a hard time to figure out what that should be for you. The other one is make it permanent. Um, the only Lyon uh, sign travels around. So it doesn't really allow people to gravitate towards. You don't know where it is. I mean, interestingly enough, the most asked question at our office is, where are the letters? Where are the letters? Where are the letters? Um, um, so they would really have to actually make sure that they know where they are because they keep changing every, every three months. Um, the other thing is, you know, allow people to interact with it. It needs to be big enough, it needs to be strong enough for people to sit on, crawl on their over, plaster on stuff, uh, change it, take it away. There are many images, and I didn't use them in the presentation, many images where people have altered the letters or plastered things on them. It allows, it should allow for people to interact with it. Um, so if you're planning to do it, it's a very uh, wise investment because, you know, let's be honest, everyone really likes a very good photo opportunity uh, with our selfie sticks, everything else. These types of structures lend themselves very easily and very clearly to take good pictures. Um, I've refrained from using a lot of statistics and saying, oh, we do so really well with I am Saddam on social media. We do really well with I am Saddam on social media. But this is just a number um, of hashtags that are used on Instagram with I am Saddam. We don't do anything on Instagram. Um, we don't ask for people to use the hashtag I am Saddam. People just seem to use it. Um, and in our office, we do have a focus, um, and later on tomorrow, a lady who's over there, Colleen, will share a little bit about that as well, probably. Um, we focus everything on one uh, social media channel, in a sense, where we use only IMs, and we don't do campaign hashtags, we don't dilute the brand by going in all kinds of directions, it's always just IMs to them. And when you compare this number to a lot of other tourism brands, this is actually doing pretty well. 
without us putting actually a lot of budget behind it. We don't use budgets, a lot of budget. We have no budget. We have no budget. It's, it saddens me, we have no budget. Um, so for having no budget, this actually to me works really well. Um, and lastly, how am I with time? I'm okay. Um, to wrap this up, the, um, last week something nice happened, and I'm not sure if there's anyone from Ireland here. Yay! Yes, that's true. Hey, go Ireland! Um, go, go Green for Patrick's Day was uh, a campaign uh, launched last week for St. Patrick's Day. And they did an amazing thing. It's something that's called, and I um, explained it earlier to someone else, I have no idea how to explain this. It's something that's called the hermeneutic circle. Um, it's because people see an image of something, they want to go there and they want to um, take a picture of it. That's something that's happening with the I Amsterdam letters as well. Um, of the people that are taking pictures of the letters, 60% indicates that they've seen the letters in pictures before. And of those 40% that haven't seen the pictures before, 90% was over the age of 30. So the very young group, the very social media engaged audience, they all have seen the letters before. Uh, so now uh, the brand and the letters are becoming a point of focus for people to go to and take pictures of. And it's probably for that reason that the Irish National Tourist Board decided when they picked 160 iconic structures in the world to lit up green for Patrick's Day to select the I Amsterdam letters as the most iconic structure for I Amsterdam. And that's people, how you build a Colosseum for under 50k. <laughs> Thank you.